the um, session today on uh, pulse today okay thank you very much guys for facilitating this we're doing we are discussing child abuse um during the lockdown all right um and talking with us today you are joining the conversation uh, is monro jaisuria um he's he's the ceo of leads um i might have lost monro but let's wait until he comes back righty um okay so leads um is a national agency right and it was established in the year i was born in 1978 uh and it's an approved charity so it's an approved ngo right and they focus on creating safer places and um brighter futures for sri lanka uh the children of sri lanka right um and um uh, so they work holistically uh for uh, at grassroots level um and across the board right they 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 do work at national policy level as well so hence the term holistically um and they are uh, working with uh, survivors of child abuse and working with children at risk so to provide the necessary safeguards yes have i covered everything monro Yes, you have come with me. All right, brilliant. Okay, so Monro <laughs> is the uh, CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Leeds. Um, uh, so Monro, would you like to uh, speak a little bit about uh, Leeds and yourself, please? Um, yes. So Leeds, we are an um, organization which works with children. so in later on in my conversation i will tell what leads is all about and what we do as an organization so i took over leads um, in on 1st of april so i'm oh. quite new to the role of being the ceo uh, so yeah it's just over 2 months yes congratulations <laughs> first of all <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you from dinner all right then um it's not easy it's not easy i uh, um uh, it's child abuse itself uh, i mean in sri lanka is such a vast and complex and you know many faceted uh, issue that it's it's yes uh, yeah it, it, and i'm sure you've been doing your so can you tell us a little bit about your background uh, do you think yes so you... my back yes so my background is from banking and finance Okay. So I was attached to. Uh, I have an experience of over six years in banking and finance. Uh, then I moved on to the NGO field about say twelve years ago, uh, and then uh, I joined Leeds on in two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, so that's that's my background. So my background is banking and finance, but uh, then only I moved into program management and then uh, into the NGO field. That's brilliant. um so you could, i mean you know how ngos work then yeah <laughs> yes yes i do <laughs> all right okay so um guy and for everyone watching um i am a survivor of child abuse myself so hence the um the discussion between the two of us because um i also work in the in the field of well, i'm trying to stop child abuse um so right let's move on to the discussions and and folks if um there's anything that you wish to ask or add please do leave a comment right and we'll try our level best to incorporate all right um okay moving so what we'll be talking about today right we'll be moving on through um what child abuse is in sri lanka and and uh, the current state uh as such of the issue so to speak and then we'll be moving on to the the impact of um uh, on the recovery process of survivors of abuse and what lockdown specifically uh how lockdown impacts it right um and then we'll be discussing the impact of lockdown and on um, child development centers right and we'll we'll explain what child development centers are Monroe will uh, talk about that, 
a little bit and then we will be talking about what leads is doing in terms of really response um and then we'll be talking about um, how to prevent and how to help the children of abuse yeah yes one yes now? that's that's yes that's, that's, that's great really yes all right brilliant okay so talking starting off on um discussing what child abuse is um all right so child abuse when we're talking about it we're talking um about abuse happens on on many levels so we are we are discussing about the physical emotional and sexual uh, emotional uh, mental you know all of that all of that comes under child abuse uh child abuse is um physical abuse it's sexual abuse it uh, neglect it is um belittling the children it is calling them names uh, it is um not providing them with education not providing them with the basic needs uh, to survive all of that is abuse um is there anything else that you want to add there um, monro in terms of abuse yes you are yes i think um, the issue with child abuse mudini is um, that what we see is only the tip of the iceberg um say monitoring the number of incidents of child abuse in sri lanka or any other country for that matter is a very difficult thing uh be it physical emotional sexual abuse or even in the terms of neglect uh yeah. may in yeah in february of uh, i mean this year i recall minister johnston fernando informing the parliament uh, that mm -hmm. 54 incidents of child abuse had been reported within the mm -hmm. first 15 days of this year alone mm -hmm. uh, and in and in terms of the lockdown that was placed uh, as a result of the covid-19 pandemic uh, we have seen a significant increase of child abuse um for example the prominent child rights group uh, referred to ecpat um referred uh, yeah to ecpat uh, reported in march that there have been an increase of 33% of physical abuse and cruelty against children um also uh, in an interview the chairperson of the national child protection authority um, which is also called the ncpa uh, mm -hmm. professor mudita vidanapati rana uh, said that yes. they they had received uh, 127 complaints of child cruelty uh, just between 16th march and 9th april um wow. so there was another article yeah so there was another article um, titled unsafe homes uh, which was published in the daily mirror uh, again in april um, uh, ananda galapati who is a medical anthropologist and a mental psycho uh, social health practitioner uh, speaks of how tensions uh, brought about by the current pandemic situation uh, such as uh, restricted space uh, financial difficulties and stresses caused by fears and uncertainties Uh, experienced by parents have been directed towards their children um well um when you talk about this um, kumudini this rise in statistics in statistics mm -hmm. can mean two things uh, either the number of incidents of abuse is on the rise or the uh, there are more survivors coming forward to report the abuse that they have faced um while it is important that incidents are reported and the per uh, perpetrators are brought to justice mm -hmm. uh, the caregivers and guardians must also ensure that the child who have who has faced traumatic experience is not victimized further mm. um uh, and also and also it is important that survivors of abuse receive the psychosocial help they need to deal with the traumatic incident itself um yeah um, uh, but it should be also noted that the way each child responds to abuse uh, will vary from child to child 
Um, some survivors may manage without any extra support, while others need more support to recover from the trauma. Um, and also, I'm sure, yeah, and also I'm sure you would have also noticed the physical abuse of children have uh, become a highly discussed topic on social media during the past few weeks. Uh, the anxiety and stress felt by parents uh, due to the lockdown, uh, loss of income, difficulties in juggling official responsibilities uh, and household work, uh, difficulties in helping children with homeschooling, could all contribute towards increased level of aggression uh, and verbal ab abuse directed at, at, at children. Um, on top of, yeah, on top of all this, there is a substance abuse and misuse or even psychiatric conditions of parents and caregivers, which might be aggravated during this time, which could in turn lead to various forms of child abuse. Yeah. Um, so all in all, we need to remember that in dealing with the issue of child abuse, <laughs> prevention is always better than cure company. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so we need to come together as a society to be more aware uh, and put an absolute stop to child abuse in Sri Lanka. Absolutely. I completely yeah. agree with you. Um, and I think in, in this uh, term, so um, although we'll be revisiting a lot of this at the, at the end of this, but um, when it comes to preventing child abuse, um, it needs to be a, a many-pronged approach, right? It needs to be not, not just um, child-focused. It needs to be caregiver-focused. It needs to be society-focused. It needs the education and awareness um, uh, campaigns need to be across the board. Um, and, and we all need to, I think, first of all, accept that we are all uh, accountable and we are all responsible for keeping the children safe you know uh, it, it can't mm -hmm. no one can um, afford to step back and say it's not my problem it doesn't apply to absolutely me. yeah yes yeah. yes definitely yeah um, so there was this um, um, now I, I I work with a lot of um, NGOs and INGOs and CSOs that, that's uh, civil society organizations uh, who do a lot of grassroots level work, um, and mm -hmm. uh, the there's an um, estimated. Uh, I'm, I'm careful to say estimated here, but the statistic at the moment is one in two children are exposed mm -hmm. to child abuse of some sort, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which is a horrendous statistic. That's fifty percent of our child population in Sri Lanka. Uh, which is mm -hmm. absolutely horrible. Um, and I agree with you that, you know, hopefully th this means that it's more about, you know, people are reporting uh, instances of child abuse more as opposed to there being an increase in the number. But having yeah. said that, I do think that COVID uh, has actually, might actually have uh, increased the uh, instances of child abuse, mm -hmm. right, because of the additional yeah. stress that the, the caregivers are under, um, which is, yeah, yeah it's, I mean, and, and I, I'm not entirely sure how uh, that's going to be, uh, it's a horrible place to be, right, you're stuck in, mm -hmm. a, in a home with someone who's abusive, and you have no way out, and children mm -hmm. are, um, don't know how to ask for help as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, it's wow. Um, okay, so there, um, right? Um, and also, Monroe, the um, hypothesis how do you feel about the hypothesis that most abusers are people who have been abused themselves? Mm -hmm. um, right? Um, yeah. And yeah, a lot of the abuse is manifesting, so uh, survivors who have uh, mm -hmm. gone through abuse, um, the, all of that uh, damage is actually manifesting 
um, in forms of mm -hmm. how, how they treat other people. Yeah, true. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is... Yeah. So you, you find that uh, people who were abused by their parents, uh, beaten by their parents, and, and I mean, that it's actually normalized in society, right? That uh, yeah, they yeah. were beaten That's... by our parents, so, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we are quite fine, so we should beat our children. Who will mm -hmm. turn out quite yeah. fine, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. A, that's mm -hmm. a common, a common phrase in uh, in uh, Sri Lankan culture. Yeah, but mm -hmm. and that yeah. that particular thinking applies across. Yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, no, I mean, also, I think uh, when when you talk about that, I mean, you brought the conversation to a to a point where, I mean, it's a very very good point where. Uh, the lockdown and the impact on the recovery process of survivors of child abuse as well. Uh, well, when you talk about that, Kumuduni, I think it's obvious to all of us the kind of impact, <coughs> sorry, this lockdown has had on people at large. Um, well, as adults, you and I both know uh, just how difficult social isolation can be. Um, yeah. We can only we can uh, only imagine then the impact this isolation can have on the recovery process of children who have survived abuse, uh, or even the impact that social distancing can have upon a child uh, who does not receive love and attention from his family, or the effect that a lockdown can have on children who are trapped uh, in an unsafe environment. Uh, I must say uh, that the lockdown was an absolutely um, necessary measure to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And I really want to thank the government, uh, frontline workers, security forces, uh, and the sanitation workers for all they are doing to ensure uh, the safety of all of us. Uh, but saying that, the lockdown has also had many side effects. Uh, one such side effect is the massive impact on the recovery process of survivors of abuse. Uh, we, at, uh, we at Leeds know this firsthand as we work with survivors of child abuse and we provide therapeutic care through three centers operated by Leeds in um, Jaffna, Badulla and Colombo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so our residential therapeutic care program for survivors um, have been greatly affected by this lockdown, uh, especially during the period of curfew as it was uh, difficult for the caregivers and counsellors to access the centres. Uh, mm. We also found it difficult to conduct family follow-up meetings, uh, which is part of our reintegration process for survivors yeah. of abuse. Um, our counsellors have had to be in touch with the children and their families remotely. Uh, so providing all the support they can give. Uh, but these have been some truly challenging times for us as well uh, as for the children. So especially since there are shortages in funding for psychosocial care for survivors of ch uh, child abuse in Sri Lanka, uh, we have had to incur very high expenses during these unprecedented times, especially with significant hygiene and logistical needs as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a background how how um, it has been there the past few weeks, Kumudini. Uh, so, but um, I heard uh, is this true that um, the government actually so in in terms of support from the government uh, when it comes to children in the um, probation institutes and the child care centers, it's actually but twenty rupees. Per child is is that actually a yes it's it's a very very minimal amount that has been oh given uh, such as twenty rupees uh, so I mean that's why like all the funds that has to come through to these sort of children have to come through uh, private me uh, private uh, ways and uh, and then through uh, donations and collections wow the um Monro just um. Do you do you by any chance have an idea of how many children uh, are there in these um, um, centers? I mean, it runs into thousands, Kumudini. I don't have like a, a exact figure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, in the three centers that we deal with, 
Yeah. Uh, we have, I think, over 600 children who are, who are, who are whom we are dealing with. Um, so, I mean, the three areas that we spoke of, Jaffna, Badula, and Kalambu, are the three uh, highest uh, uh, vulnerable three areas that uh, uh, these children come from. So that's why we are working in those three areas. Uh, so, I mean, these are only the reported cases that which comes to us through the probation department. Uh, but mm -hmm. there are so many other so many other children who have gone through abuse and then and it has never come to light and there's no proper um, um, uh, counseling or anything that has been done towards these children. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I was saying the, the estimation is one in two children. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Uh, it's, wow. Um, okay, so uh, we're, we're, we've actually brought the conversation down to uh, the impact on the lockdown where, where child development centers, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so we, we were um, on, in a previous conversation, we had said that we have, um, your, you guys have introduced the term child development center instead of the word orphanages. Yeah? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so, I mean, I mean <clears throat> uh, most of us are aware, unaware, Kumuduni, uh, about the struggles that uh, the child development centers, or which is called as CDCs, face at uh, times like this. Uh, so, to answer to your qu uh, question, let me first uh, clarify uh, why we call it CDCs and not orphanages. So, we don't use the term orphanages because of the social stigma associated with it. And and because most of the children who receive care at such centers are actually not orphans, but those who don't receive adequate care from their natural families. Right. And at Leeds, we are advocating for a family for all children through alternative parenting. Yes. Um, so in Sri Lanka, there are many such CDCs located across the country. Um, and also, we, we just spoke earlier about some, uh, some of ways in which emotional neglect can impact children. So similarly, uh, in CDCs, children who have faced neglect or rejection at a younger uh, age at the hands of their natural families uh, are now forced to face a period of social isolation uh, mm -hmm. that can bring about high levels of emotional distress and anxiety. So again, uh, not all children are the same, and the psychological status or maturity of children vary from child to child. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I must also mention that the caregivers working in such cent uh, centers are really stretched thin um, in providing the necessary care for their wards. Um, and this, in turn, affects the children as they might not receive the individual care and attention that they need at a difficult time like this. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, Le yeah. So, as an organization, Leeds continues working with CDCs to help them cope during this difficult time, which I will be able to share more on as we continue our discussion. Right. Um, are probation centers also uh, categorized on the CDCs? Uh, no, the, probation centers are not are not categorized as uh, on the CDCs. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. The okay, so the children who are uh, removed from the so from from the from the law, right? From the legal point of view, um, children who are removed from um, unsafe environments by the police or by by the by uh, 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 the law, they are placed in CDCs or probation centers. Uh, so uh, what we do is, uh, Kumudini, that through the probation, those children are referred to us. Uh, and then we, uh, we uh, counsel them for three months, I mean, in-house counseling for three months. Uh, and then we uh, provide them either if they need vocational training uh, or any sort of training or where we can, where we can um, uh, send them back to the, to the society or even it can be back to their children or back to their family. But... Uh, we are very particular that they won't go back to the to the, to the abuser or, or, or the household. So we have to uh, find alternatives for that. Uh, so I mean, later on, I will be speaking a little bit about that yeah, as well. Yeah. Completely. yeah. Right. Um, okay. 
so folks the um now monro brought up a bunch of um, um points there about the emotional state of children in the, the cdc's and the emotional state of the caregivers within the cdc's right i mean now imagine if we are feeling strain and stress right uh, and we are dealing with what a maximum of 3 4 children living in uh, under the same roof um these uh, caregivers in cdc are, are faced with dealing with like what hundreds of children yeah. together and can yeah. you imagine how much strain because they are constantly trying to figure out how to feed these children and how to care for them so you can imagine what kind of stress these people are in um rain uh, i mean yes we are dealing with a very um unusual set of circumstances uh, as in yeah, yeah. people at home but then these these centers um are actually dealing with these things for a lot longer than we have mm-hmm. right because they are constantly okay. struggling with yeah absolutely uh, and, yeah yeah um, so and also uh, something that i wanted to bring up um see something i heard from in terms of probation centers so there are um children who are removed from abusive environments and put in probation centers but these probation centers also house the children who have been uh, who displayed deviant behavior and are placed in the probation center as well so you are actually putting in abusive children with abused children and that that you know stresses on children itself they are going to manifest on on by yeah. them bullying each other you know yeah. that's uh, mm-hmm. that's something that is huge and i i don't think that particular um problem is being resolved so to speak well we have a lot of issues that we need to do deal with as a as a country mm-hmm. um yeah okay so um we in terms of the relief response that leads is providing would you like to speak a little bit about what you guys have been doing monro um yeah, yes kumudini so i mean let me uh, before going into that let me give you like a brief overview uh, of what leads is so leads is a, mm-hmm. a national agency um that was founded in the year 1978 uh, so today we are an approved charity working mainly with and for children of sri lanka mm-hmm. uh, for us for us children come first in all that we do um, so our work is rooted in recognizing the child not just as part of the family but as the part of the family the community and the whole nation absolutely so the work of leads is vast and a number of projects are conducted uh, annually but mm-hmm. to keep it simple uh, our work is focused on safeguarding children community transformation and crisis response mm mm-hmm. um so right now leads is supporting families face uh, the covid-19 crisis mm mm-hmm. uh, there are so many low income families who are struggling to even provide their children with one meal a day wow. uh, i mean so many children experiencing fear anxiety depression Uh, as a result of the social distancing uh, most families are unsure of uh, how to handle their child's anxiety or even to help them cope up uh, with their emotional needs so this is where leads has come forward to support such families uh, and i may call our response uh, is twofold so the first stage uh, i mean firstly distribution of packs of dry ration Uh, among low income families okay. so this is um, an ongoing activity uh, so far uh, we have distributed hundreds of dry ration packs uh, assisting families in uh, jaffna kilinochi mulutim polonnaru chila trinkonu areliya badul uh, monaraga ratnapura kalambo hambantota and few other areas as well so mm-hmm. you can follow our social media channels for regular updates Uh, on our relief efforts um and we are also providing psychosocial assistance for children so as mentioned uh, earlier 
we work with survivors of child abuse. Uh, and we provide therapeutic care through centers in Jaffna, Bagul, and Colombo. Um, Leeds is providing special recreational packs uh, as well as continued counseling for the children uh, receiving residential and non residential support through our centers. Um, apart from this, uh, Leeds has identified 29 child development centers. Uh, in Jaffna, Badulla, Ratnapura, Monaragal, and Colombo. Mm -hmm. uh, Leeds will be distributing recreational items such as toys and stationery, mm -hmm. as, well as, as well as communication equipment in order to provide psychosocial support uh, and guidance for the children and staff of these centers uh, mm -hmm. who are finding it uh, difficult to cope uh, with the stressors and the prolonged period of uh, lockdown. So, I mean, as you may say, it is a lot of work, uh, but the staff of Leeds, especially those that are regional officers, are working around the clock uh, to reach out to those who are uh, most in need of our assistance. So if anyone would like to support these efforts, please do get in touch with us. Yes, um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, something that I've, I've noted, uh, noticed while working uh, with all of these is that the efforts themselves are sometimes fragmented and you know the collaboration is so so very important um, amongst the people who and the, and the organizations that are working towards stopping this. Um, Mono, uh, how would you, uh, the reach, do you, you guys feel that you all, um, there, there are more areas that you can, um, that you want to tap uh, but un unable to get into or um... I mean I mean we would I mean I mean the scope is vast I mean I mean even if you take each each region you, you will get yeah. uh, where there is work but um, there is a thing that we don't compromise on quality that uh, the service that we provide as well uh, so we don't uh, we, we are looking at other ways of how we can support the other areas as well so for the time being, we are concentrating on these areas, but maybe right. in the future we can look into other areas as well, which which the need is there definitely. And and this is actually where the uh, where you and I uh, of the general public can actually help, right? Uh, is to definitely, help definitely. support you guys. Um, uh, okay, so wait, there is. I think we'll be talking about this later on, uh, but I'd like to bring it up now since we're talking about it. Um, how people can donate to leads in terms of uh, if you want to help with children. Uh, to, yeah. So um, you can you can type leads as in um, the capital letter L E A D S leads. Keep a space and type the amount you wish to donate. Uh, for example, say a thousand bucks and send it to 366, right? Um, uh, there is a maximum amount that you can donate per day. That's 2000 per day is the maximum amount. But however, folks, you can imagine if uh, enough people <coughs> donate even a thousand bucks, that's, that's quite a lot, right? Uh, so um, uh, you can see how much leads is doing for the children and then there is such such a need across the board so please um please do uh, reach out and donate even if it's 100 rupees even 100 Definitely. rupees is still a, is a big thing so please do help out um right so in terms of action points for the public on how to prevent and what awareness is, right. Goodness. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we've talked about how large and um, thing is, so the issue is where child abuse is, right? It's, yes. and, and think about it, folks. Children are, they are, uh, they're not recognized as individuals even by the law right sometimes 
uh when it comes to human rights i mean we all we all focus on our rights right uh, but when it comes to a child they are not capable of standing up to their to for themselves because they are trained from from babyhood that they must listen to their elders right especially in the sri lankan context where respect your elders is a huge cultural thing right so uh, most of the time you will find that the child is suffering in silence because they they don't yeah. know who they can reach out to uh, they don't know whether they can actually reach out to someone uh, you have children themselves saying they don't they will lie sometimes to protect their parents or their caregivers because they're scared of losing the only home that they have right exactly yeah it's 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 a it's a horrible situation to be in um so what can we do uh for us parents um yeah i would say making sure that we are looking after ourselves and our emotional welfare is absolutely paramount when it comes to looking after our children because our frustrations and how we behave affects the child right mm. um yeah. anger management and all of that is something because otherwise we are just going to take it out on our children um and exactly. that is actually abuse right it's something that we don't address we don't talk about um uh, we don't look at ourselves and say look i might have actually abused my child at some point it's entirely possible right that we are by us uh not managing our anger and our responses we are in inadvertently hurting our child yeah uh, absolutely okay so wait hang on there is a request saying repeat the number okay the number folks is uh the number that you have to send the request to is 366 right yes it's 366 366 and you have to type l e a d s in capital keep a space and type the amount that you wish to donate okay to 366 right um yeah going back to um to speaking out okay so Yeah, you you mentioned uh, before and i completely agree with you that prevention is better than cure um yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and, and even and uh, as you said there is a lot of talk about um stopping abuse and that's stopping abuse across the board um okay. so but especially where children are concerned um okay. there are um hmm What are the ways that you can think of that a child can reach out for help, Mon? Um, yes, I think um, I mean as I mentioned and you correctly pointed out again, prevention is always better than cure. Um, so there are a lot of things that can be done to try to prevent abuse. Uh, I think the first step is to always speak up against abuse. Uh, don't be afraid to speak up on behalf of a child. who is in a vulnerable situation uh this world will be a different place if more people spoke up and created broader awareness about this issue um and secondly if you know of a child at risk or abuse or who is in a vulnerable situation please inform the authorities uh, the child line at the national child protection authority is 1929 uh, i'll repeat it again it's 1929 so you can also call leads on r247 hotline uh, which is 0757 121212 so it's 0757 121212 So if you need help or advice how to address an incident uh, or abuse or if you need help for a child you know uh, one of our mental health practitioners or in-house trained counselors will available uh, available uh, to guide you 
uh, and also i kindly request all adults to look to the needs of the children in your household and also in your neighborhood uh, especially during especially during this lockdown uh, please look beyond the nutrition and health needs of your child child and also at their emotional educational recreational and the hyg- hygiene needs as well um, make make use of this time to teach your child the key messages on protection uh, and encourage them to teach it to others i mean tell them that you are special there is nobody in the world like you and your body belongs to you um, i mean the areas in your body covered by your su- uh, swimsuit are private uh nobody is allowed to touch them unless for medical reasons and that has to be done with the permission of your guardian um if you are touched in those areas you must say no uh try and run away or scream and always tell an adult um leads published a guideline for parents on how to respond to child's uh, on how to respond to children's needs Uh, at the onset of the lockdown uh, you can see it on our social media sites uh, and our handle is uh, at uh, at leads sri lanka so that's l e a d s sri lanka so uh, parents please support one another during this time as it can be very stress- a very stressful for caregivers for children as well so if you are struggling please reach out for help so that your emotions will not negatively affect your child um you can also join with leads in our efforts to provide the much needed psychosocial support uh, to children uh, who have survived uh, abuse uh you can also most certainly volunteer with us um donate towards leads work Uh, we invite you to sponsor a child to receive psychosocial counseling legal aid and reintegration support uh, including receiving vocational training so that they could rebuild a better life for themselves um, you can even donate towards our work in providing necessary care for the children uh, and the staff of cdcs uh, you can donate uh, via our website which is Uh, www.leads.lk/donation uh, i will repeat it again it's www.leads.lk/donation uh, or if you use dialog services kumudini has already uh, told yeah. us about uh, i will repeat it once again you yeah. can type leads uh, which is l e a d s keep a space type in the amount you wish to donate and send it to 366 uh please note the maximum amount you can donate is rupees 2000 um, per day um please connect with us uh you can help us through your company's um, csr initiatives or connect us with uh, like minded organizations uh there are so much that we can do together i mean uh also another way that you all can help is talk about us uh, we believe that every step counts and if we do not have um the resources to help us by talking about us or sharing our content via social media mm-hmm. you can help us in our work and raise the resources we need to continue reaching out to those who most need our help kumbhuti uh, absolutely and also um, to add on to um all of that um guys leads will the visibility is something that is absolutely important when it comes to see i've got a number of calls or messages and etc saying um how can i help uh, uh children how can i help the effort this is definitely a way that you can help the effort guys all right i've also got calls from people who seen ch- uh, children at risk uh, asking okay what do i do what can i where where can i turn to who should i speak to there you go right okay one definite uh, resource that we have is the national child protection authority and that's uh, you need to reach out to 1929 right and to report uh, the the incident 
the other is to um, reach out to leads and ask them how can i help them what is the process what needs to be done um how can i help and the other thing um, that i'm going to bring about is guys the we are all have a reluctance to get involved right the phrase you know if i get involved i'll become the bad guy is something <laughs> i'm pretty sure every one of us has said at some point or the other if you hear screaming in the you know across the neighborhood um and you hear suspicious sounds uh, or you see a child uh, being neglected if you know anything any any kind of abnormal uh, behavior may, try not to turn a blind eye that's the first thing that we need to do right do not turn a blind Absolutely. eye because Absolutely. yeah because you know children can't help themselves we have to do it for them we have to be the ones who step up and say look uh, it's it's always better to apologize afterwards if you made a mistake you apologize right but if if it was me and i knew that there was someone across the board who is looking after my child i'd be grateful right because you know i someone else is uh, um, my, because my child is more important to me than my reputation and my what other people think about me yeah then this is exactly. something that we all need to 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 think about um okay there is a, a question here uh, been repeated uh, sorry uh, education system um <laughs> okay so there is guys the again when it comes to um re, uh, how do you say it to to rethink an education system an entire system takes a lot and right? and that push is not going to come from anyone else but us we have to make that ask we have to demand we have to send out the uh, to let it be known by the powers that be that we want the education system to to integrate or to have things in place that are that help our children understand what abuse is and how to how to protect themselves right um absolutely and also as i said leeds has um a lot of these organizations including leeds has uh, material that can be shared that can be seen across the board in terms of educating ourselves you know we one thing that's not wait for an education system to revitalize itself that's educate ourselves there are um, you know um, material that we can access that we can educate ourselves on um it is something ending child abuse is something that we all must work together to do um and absolutely and so a place like leeds will not be able to reach you uh except through their marketing efforts and their visibility efforts whereas you guys can make a decision to help and to volunteer in some way right and that alone can make a huge difference even if it's to one child's life it's still Definitely. one life saved right it's one life enhanced one life save and it's so very important um so i been pretty sure that pulse is going to be uh, um putting out a uh, information uh, flyer on after this regarding the how how to help um donate or how to volunteer and what the action um points are uh, yes, after this meeting they go to yes yeah right yeah. um so that's well that, thank you very much pulse for doing that it's absolutely fantastic that um you uh, you guys are taking up this cause and and uh, giving the much needed visibility on your platform thank you so much um mm. yeah is there anything and all, else yeah and all, i think yes and i think um, in conclusion i mean thank you kundini for taking the time to discuss Uh, this important topic with us 
uh, we have limited time now. Uh, so if not, there is just so much more that can be discussed uh, on this last topic of uh, child abuse in Sri Lanka. Uh, so I, I especially want to thank Pulse for sharing their platform with us and for their continued partnership and support of Leeds. Uh, a brief but heartfelt thank you also to all you who joined us today. So we look forward to connecting with each of you. Uh, and for more information on our work, please visit our website, www.leads.lk. Um, thank you once again. Stay safe, uh, stay, stay safe and God bless you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, folks, for listening in so much. And we will uh, hopefully connect outside uh, beyond this platform. All right. Stay safe. Love you all. Bye-bye.